Hey y'all, Samantha here from Happily Home Fitting. I'm coming at you today with some canning information, some basics, some canning supplies that are my favorite and what I like to use here on our homestead, and encouraging you to join us in the broadcast channel, Regeneration24, over on Instagram. You can find us at our English farmhouse over on Instagram, um, and you can join our broadcast channel for free, and every month you will be getting a guide on new skills um, that you can learn and jump in with us, and we'll also be offering these YouTube videos for you. So why don't we go ahead and jump in on canning. Um, grab yourself a cup of coffee, because it's gonna be a long one. All right, so today we're gonna be talking about some of the basics of canning and what we use here on Happily Homestead. Um, as you can see behind me, there's quite an array of things here from basic canning supplies to books, jars, um, some of the product that we've already canned, and also some of the items that we use. So I'm going to be going over three basic ways to can your food, which include steam canning, water bath canning, and also pressure canning. Um, those are the three widely used ways to preserve food um, on many homesteads here across America and also um, in Europe. And so anyway, today we're gonna to be talking about one of my favorites, steam canning and pressure canning. Um, but before we do that, I wanna start off with some of the basic items that we use, um, whether you are steam canning, water bath canning, or pressure canning. So here um, is just a way that I like to store all of my bands. These are referred to as bands, and they actually sit on top of your jar. So if this is your ball canning jar or whatever kind of jar that you're using to can with, there's this band and this band is called a band. And this top is called your lid. So it comes in two pieces and you can see that the underneath of this lid area actually has like a little seal. We call that the gasket seal. So that is built in to the lid themselves and that sits on top of your jar and then the band is placed over the top to hold that lid in place. Now when you are water bath canning you'll tighten it to just a fingertip tightness. You see I'm not like overly scrunching down on this just kind of tight and then we place it in and that allows all the extra air bubbles to come out vent out and then um, give it a really good seal down at the bottom. You don't want it too loose, otherwise you're not gonna get a very good seal because food is gonna get trapped in between your gasket and um, the glass jar. So make sure that when you are canning, you're using this two system method and you have both pieces and that you've got some good clean jars so they can seal properly. Um, but I'll get back into that in just a little bit. I like to use the bungee cord method around here for all of our extras because these are reusable. You don't need to throw them away. Our lids on the other hand here, we want to make sure that we're using new ones every time that we water bath can or we pressure can just so that the gaskets don't go out on us and long term preservation on our shelf. Um, so this is how we store them. We bungee cord them, put them on a bungee cord like this hang one end and then this end we just attach around one of the lids there, the bands that you can see. So super easy and then we can hang these in our canning room and they don't take up as much space. They're not in a massive um, container and they're just really accessible to get to. I want to go over my little canning basket here with you. In my canning basket this is what I use pretty much all the time. Um, and I like to keep everything in this one little basket because then it keeps everything together and I don't lose it. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna be going over is our funnel. This funnel is one of my favorites. You can get a standard funnel, but this one is my favorite. And the reason being is because it gives you the head spacing right here. You can see that it is clearly marked and this head spacing comes in really handy when I'm doing it on my canning. Um, I'm able to grab my jar, place my lid over the top, and then you can see here, 
I'm able to see how much headspace I still have left going up my jar. So if something calls for a quarter of an inch of headspace, I just find my quarter of an inch here on the jar and then I fill to that line. Um, that is really important in recipes. Some recipes will call for a quarter inch, some will call for half an inch, some will call for an inch. And it's really important to keep that headspace um, that the recipe calls for because of the expansion of the food in your jar. So this is a great little tool to invest in um, and you can find it through our Amazon shop that is also linked through our Instagram. Another tool that I love, you can also get in a beginner's kit is your jar lifter. So this little mechanism looks like this and this bottom section is rounded so it can lift your jars and this is a really great tool to be able to put your jars into and bring them out of hot water or your pressure canner. These jars are extremely hot when they've been in a water bath canner or a pressure canner and so touching them um, you're gonna get severely burned um, but also it allows you to get a good grip on your jars and move them when they've been sterilized. Um, also just easier to get in and out and then place wherever you need to place them. Um, but th this is a great tool which you can pick up in any beginner's kit. Um, this is standard. Also standard tools but love them. Sometimes this doesn't come in it so this is a great little extra purchase if um, you want to grab one they are called a lid lifter and they're really nice they have a magnet on the end here you can see that so this is a lid lifter and this is great for when you're sterilizing those mag the, the lids and you can't get to them because they're down in boiling hot water so this is a great little tool because it'll attach to your lid and lift it straight out of the water for you keeping it nice and sterile and then you can place it on top of your glass jar and you put your band on there. So when you are canning, you're gonna be sterilizing these and boiling them in water. You're gonna be sterilizing your bands and also your jars. So these three items, these are kind of hard to get to down at the bottom of the canner. And so it's great to have this little tool that will bring it up for you due to its magnetic capability there. Um, so that little tool again is called a lid lifter. You can purchase them on Amazon. Um, you can also find them at Walmart sometimes. Um, the next thing that I'm gonna talk about is your head spacer and debubbler. This is what it looks like. Normally comes in a kit with one of these. They'll normally come together with a funnel. Um, and this again measures your head space. So if you don't get one of these that already has a little headspace measure on it, you can do it with this. Real easy is you would take your jar here and you would go ahead and place your notch of however far down it needs to be. And there you are measuring here how much headspace you still have left. So here you can see if I put it all the way down like that, I have about an inch of headspace there because this section here is what's going to be touching my food and then that would be the top of my jar. So that is how you measure your head space according to whatever your recipe says. Next in my little basket of canning things is a timer. I love using a timer in canning because some recipes call for 15 minutes, some call for 20 minutes, some call for 30 minutes. And when you're pressure canning, it's really important to notate when your canner gets to the pressure. Once it gets to pressure, that's when you start timing, not when you put your food in. So that's really important to note that when you're pressure canning, your timing actually starts once it gets to pressure, and then that's when you would turn this on and start your timing 60 minutes, 70 minutes, 80 minutes, whatever it might be. Um, so I like to have a little timer on hand that I can use that's not connected to anything else. Um, if your power goes out and you're using a microwave to do time, then you're gonna lose your time. So 
So this is a great little investment and I have this one from Four Jars. Next is going to be a thermometer. This is a super cheap thermometer. I got it off Amazon. Love it though. Um, for canning, I can see how hot my water is um, just by pointing it and it shoots a laser. It's an infrared thermometer. So super easy. Um, I also use this outside just to check our chicken coop temp and the soil temperature. Um, it just comes in super handy for all sorts of things. So a good infrared thermometer. Um, the next thing that I like to keep, and I have a couple of these, that's why this one's brand new, is a canning rack. Now, traditional canning racks um, for water bath canning are gonna look like this. They're gonna have a basket with handles and you're gonna put your jar in and then place this down into the water. But if you don't want to buy one of the big old canning pots, I mean, they look like this, they're massive. I mean, simply people just don't have room for something like this in their kitchen. Um, so this type of pot might not work for you. Instead, you can get one of these and turn any pot that you have into a water bath canner. So you don't specifically need this one from the store, traditional looking with the canner in the bottom. You can just get one of these racks and plop it into any pot that you have and turn it into a canner. The reason being is on the bottom of your pot, you need a barrier between the bottom of the pot and the bottom of your jars. Why? Because you don't want the bottom tier to blow out. And when you put these straight onto the bottom of a pot, you have boiling water, your likelihood of blowing out the bottom is quite high. So we make sure that we have a barrier, we place our jar on the barrier, and then you have the bottom of the pot. This is a great investment, it's cheap, it's about five to seven dollars, depending on what kind you get. You can also get them off Amazon, um, but you can grab them at your local Walmart too, and it's a lot cheaper than investing in one of these. But again, if you want to invest in one of these, um, and it holds quite a lot too. So now we've gone over some of our basics. Let's go over the size of our jars. The size of our jar is really important when it comes to canning and figuring out what you want to can. So here you can see that we have a quart size. We have um, these pints and they're both pints, this one and this one, but we're going to get into the sizing in just a minute. We have half and then we have quarters. Um, these larger quart ones I love to do for our pickles, for our green beans, for apple pie fillings, things that you need more of. And then these pints are great for tomato sauces, um, smaller jars of pickles, things like that. So I wanted to show you the difference between these two pints and why they look bigger but they're not is because of their openings. So this opening is what they would call a regular mouth opening and this is what they call a wide mouth opening. And you can kind of see the difference here in this shape and then how wide they are, how big. So when you are buying your lids it's really important to remember what size that you have and get the size that fits because a regular and a wide mouth do not fit the same. This is your wide mouth ring that goes on this jar and you can see when trying to place it on this one how big it is. It doesn't fit. It actually goes right over it. So that's really important to make sure that you're grabbing the right size for the jars that you have. Next is our half pints and our quarters. These are great for little gifts, for giving away. These are four ounces. These are great for jams and jellies, keeping in your fridge. I know that not all of us go through a whole lot of jam and jelly, so this is a great way to keep them preserved. And that is an eight ounce. Some of my favorite pectins to use. Um, we have a few 
few here. So we have this one, which I grabbed from Azure Standard, um, and it's Pomona's Universal Pectin. It also uses calcium water. Um, this is a great one that you can grab. It's actually fairly cheap for how much you get um, through Azure Standard. And then the ones that you can grab off the grocery store shelves are these two, and they're made by SureGel. Um, you can also grab the low sugar, no sugar. Um, this one's just the original. And then this is the liquid. Um, so this is great for jams and jellies that have almost no natural pectin. Um, the liquid pectin is a great choice for that. Um, the original Sure Gel can't go wrong, makes all of your jams and jellies set up perfectly. Um, just a staple in our house as well as the Pomona's. This one is a little bit um, more intense because you have to make the calcium water to go with it. Um, this one is just directly out of the box, pour it in and you're done. Um, I would say this one's healthier though, out of them all. Next, we're gonna go over the canning lids. I prefer a specific brand. So I don't use the canning lids that come with my jars. Many of the times, the ones that have been coming with my jars here recently are not working and they're not sealing correctly. So I switched over to four jars and I use their canning lids. Um, and they are like 100% seal rate on everything. I have not had any issues with them. I've gone through probably about 200 lids already um, from this company. And so I can firmly say that they work. They're good. They are really thick. Their gaskets are nice and thick. Um, and they just give an overall really good seal. So definitely check them out if you want to switch your lids. Some of the books that I go by um, use for my recipes is obviously the Ball Canning Blue Book. And then I also have a small stack <laughs> of books here um, that I like to use um, and get recipes from. So the Naturally Sweet Food in a Jar book, you can actually grab these from your library. Most libraries have these on hand. Um, so you can go check them out before you go to purchase. And then a lot of my books I also get from thriftbooks.com. Um, very, very cheap to get your books from, and there's so many on there. So go check out your library and also check out thriftbooks.com. The Amish Canning Cookbook, this is another great one. I love this one, has some really good recipes in it. It has a short history of canning, um, a list of all your tools and supplies that you need to get started. So this is a good one to have on hand. This is great if you're going to be using the Pomona's Pectin. She has her own recipe book here um, and tells you how to use her pectin with these recipes. So this is a great one if you decide to go with that pectin. Um, the small batch preserving, which most of you will probably be in unless you are homesteading on acreage. Um, small batch preserving is one of my favorites. Again, I picked this up from Thrift Books. I think it was $4 on their great find. Reason being that we don't always have a bunch to preserve. Even though we have a garden, even though we are growing food or getting food from a farmer's market or we're getting food from a local farmer, sometimes it's just not in huge bulk. And that's where the small batch preserving comes in. I really like this book because you can use just a couple cups of something like you would find at the grocery store on sale and preserve it and put it up on your shelf. So this is definitely one that I would recommend to have in your book collection. Um, you know, it talks about this one, for example, it says half a pound of tomatillos. That's a very easy amount to find at your grocery store an easy amount to handle as a new um, beginner canner. Um, and also just for myself, sometimes I don't want to be canning 90 pounds of green beans um, or a bushel of green beans. It's just a lot to do all at once. 
and sometimes I just don't have the time for it. So this is a great way to preserve food in smaller quantities and still get stuff up on your shelves. The last book, highly recommend, especially if you're gonna be pressure canning, from the Canning Diva, um, the complete guide to pressure canning. Go follow her on Instagram as well. She has some amazing recipes. She um, has been canning for a really, really long time and pressure canning is her specialty. Um, she has so many recipes in here from broths to stews to vegetables and she also breaks it down for you what you need for headspace, um, how you can pack your jars, what, what, what about, whether it is raw or hot packed, um, what they need to be in as far as sizing, like we've talked about here. So this is a great book to have for pressure canning and highly, highly, highly recommended. So after we've gone over all of this, I know you're wondering about these canners. And so I want to show you all the canners, go over them and talk about each one. So these two that I have up here, um, this one is a steam canner and this one is a water bath canner. And the difference between the two here is this one you're gonna fill up all the way with water. So let's look at the quarts here. We have 21.5 quarts. That's a pretty big pot to boil water in because your water has to be boiling for your jars to seal properly. Um, so that's a lot of water to put in here, a lot of water to use, and a longer wait time for water bath canning. This is the traditional method. Now, this one here is made by Fruit Saver, and it is called a steam canner. We have a bottom and we have a top, you can see here. We have a gauge right here where I was just pulling up. And the bottom, instead of having that rack system like we have here where you put everything inside of like the little cage, you're actually just gonna sit it on this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill up this pan with water. That's it. And then we're gonna put this on. We're only gonna fill up the water to this point here. So we want our water to be level and flush with this bottom plate. That's how much water you're putting in. It's about three inches or so of water. This is gonna take a lot less time to boil and create steam than filling up this monster over here. Um, and so it's gonna cut down on your water usage and it's also gonna cut down on your time. So this is a favorite for me just solely on those two things. Now, the only difference between your steam canner and your water bath canner, um, besides your water and whatnot, is that your water bath canner has a regular pot lid. Your steam bath canner does not. Your steam bath canner actually has a gauge on it. So you can see here this gauge and the gauge actually is showing you your altitude. So you're gonna be looking at your zone, zone one, zone two, zone three, and you're gonna be going by your altitude to see where you need to be. And once it hits that point on your gauge of whatever altitude you are, that's when your time is gonna start. So much like a pressure canner, and you have to wait for the steam and you have to wait for it to get to proper range. Um, but I do prefer this method a lot over the water bath canning. The last method that we are gonna talk about, um, which I think is the most intimidating method for any homesteader, or anybody getting into canning is pressure canning. Pressure canning has gotten a bad rap in the past because back in the day, you would hear of pressure canners 
blowing up and going through the ceiling and just beams everywhere. And today they are not made the same. So there are a lot more um, safety features involved um, for these pressure canners so that they don't do what they used to do. Um, and it takes a lot of that intimidation out. But obviously, when you get a pressure canner, no matter what brand you go with, make sure that you read your instruction manual thoroughly and make sure that you follow all the steps for your pressure canner. Not every pressure canner is the same. So if you have a Presto or you have an All-American, they're gonna be completely different and you need to read the manual for each one. That's number one. Number two. Whoa. This is the All-American 921 pressure canner. It's a beast, y'all. Um, it is really heavy, but it is amazing. You can see here that this is the clamp system. So I'm gonna take my rubber band off and show you because this is for storage. This here is gonna be clamping down the top of your pressure canner. If you have a Presto pressure canner, it's gonna look a little different. It's just gonna be a snap lock system. Um, the All-American 921 here is just a little different in the fact that the whole entire system is going to clamp down with these. So they're actually going to securely clamp each section down on your canner all the way around here. So I would do all of these all the way around once my cans are inside and then we would have our pressure gauge here. And then we have this weight. So the weight for the All-American canner, you can actually see has different numbers. So we got 15 pounds, we have five pounds, and we have 10 pounds of pressure. And there's little slots in each one to determine how much pressure you're going to have on your canner. Now, again, that goes by altitude. So say that my altitude is 6,500 feet. We're going to can at 15 pounds of pressure when this has a steady stream for about 10 minutes or so. Again, reference your instruction manual. You're going to go ahead and place your weight on your canner right there. And we're going to watch this gauge here. This is going to tell us how much pounds of pressure it's going to tell us um, our uh, degrees here and so we want to make sure that all of these are fastened down tightly we want to make sure we have the correct weight for our pressure canner for your altitude um, and honestly there's nothing else to it that's it it's just making sure that your safety features are in place and that you are canning at the correct pressure um, so let's take a look inside the all-American 921 pressure canner. Here we have the lid. Again, taking a closer look at it, this is the gauge that you want to keep your eye on. And then this is going to be where we put our weight. So this is where steam is going to come out when you know it's ready to put your weight on. And this is your handle what it looks like underneath and this is the inside of your canner so again just like our water bath canner we need something on the bottom to protect our glasses and then this canner comes with two why does it come with two because you can stack your can let me show you what that looks like. If you're gonna be stacking inside of your pressure canner, you're gonna put one down at the very bottom of the pressure canner, and then you would take your jar, place it here, and you would fill up this entire piece with your pint-sized jars. Remind you that you don't wanna be mixing different sizes in here because they do need different cook times. Um, so if you're gonna do a pressure can of all pints, make sure that you put pints on the top too. Then after you fill it up with all of your pints on the bottom, you would take the second piece, put it over the top, and you would stack 
your next layer of pints or whatever size it is into your pressure canner. But that is how you would safely stack inside of a pressure canner. I hope that going over this information with you, learning a little bit about each pressure canner, you're able to decide what's gonna work on your homestead and in your kitchen. Um, if you have a glass top, make sure that you check with the manufacturer of your cooker to see what it will accommodate. Some glass cookers will not accommodate a pressure canner, um, but some will. Also make sure that when you're researching your products, you look for something that's flat bottomed for a glass cooker instead of something that's beveled. So I hope that you'll join me over on Instagram for Regeneration24 when we learn new skills every single month. You can find us again at Our English Farmhouse and I'll post the link below our YouTube channel. Make sure that you like and subscribe to stay up to date. Hope you all have a good one.